Okay, let's start. Good morning, dear students. My name is uh, Turarbek Laura, Turarbekova Laura, or Turarbekova Laura Vladimirovna, if you want uh, different forms of, uh, uh, of my name. And uh, today we start our uh, lectures on philosophy. Usually I'm... Um, I'm saying that uh, this is not philosophy as such, but we can talk about introduction to philosophy. So I'm your teacher of philosophy. This is the first lecture and the week number one. And of course, traditionally, we um, uh, first lecture is the introduction to the discipline. So I am. I have to open my presentation. Sorry, my computer is not very strong. So uh, the uh, speed perhaps uh, is uh, not uh, really, uh, really uh, strong. So. You can see my name, you can see my, my uh, email and my phone number. And please, if you didn't join, uh, you didn't uh, join yet, not somebody, I'm sorry, somebody sent me messages. Uh, so uh, if you didn't join our group on WhatsApp, please, leaders of your groups, Starosty, please you send me your names and groups and you say I am the leader of the group tourism or biology or I don't know what else. Uh, please send me the link to the group. I will send you the link to the group on WhatsApp where we exchange all information about our course of philosophy. So, as I said, I'm sorry, there are some students who join us now. Uh, as I said, the first lecture traditionally is introduction. And um, I would like also, uh, I would like also to say that all lectures are recorded. You understand this, but I have to remind you. And today we're going to talk about the origins of philosophy and the meaning of this term. We're going to talk about Excel age, the theory of Excel age. You will know what it is. Uh, also, we going to uh, uh, to uh, make some definition of the worldview, what is this worldview, and the relationship between philosophy and worldview. Also, we are going to discuss different types of worldview, just like mythological, religious, and philosophical worldviews. You will know about different branches of philosophy, about history of philosophy and its periodization. Also, we're going to discuss some sources for working and we finish with questions to the lecture number one. How to work with these questions? I will explain you tomorrow during our seminar online. So, first, what is philosophy? Usually, when I'm starting each lecture, not only the introduction to philosophy, but each lecture, even for students from philosophical faculty, I remind that before to know about the meaning of some words, you don't know the meaning, the sense. So you have to understand its etymology. What is etymology? You know, of course, but I just remind that this is a section of linguistics that studies the origin of words. 
And for philosophy, especially, etymology is very important. Why? Because philosophy is a very ancient discipline. And as such, we have many words from ancient Greek and Latin language. So, of course, ancient Greek and Greek in general here, especially in Kazakhstan, but not only in Kazakhstan, is not the language the most uh, easy to understand. And of course, Latin language also is uh, this language, so uh, that language. So we uh, we have to understand the meaning every time. And what about philosophy? When we are talking about philosophy, in English we say philosophy, in French we say philosophy, in Russian we say philosophia, in Arab, falsafa, in Kazakh, falsapa, 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 different pronunciations, etc. But you see that the pronunciation of the word is quite the same. Why? Because philosophy as word is not the word from our language, but it's from ancient Greek philosophia. And the word philosophia, philosophia is composed of two words. First, philos, love or loving and the second meaning of this word is friendship and the second word is sophia wisdom you know this uh, name for 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 girls sophia yes sophia it means wisdom for your knowledge for your information so philosophia philosophy is love of wisdom this is a general information. Every uh, cultural person should know about philosophia, love of wisdom. What is about the origins of philosophy? Not origins of the culture of thinking. I'm sorry, uh, this is the translation, ancient translation from my codec. Because origins of philosophy, we don't know this uh, clumsy construction of thinking. Introduction, origins of philosophy. So uh, you should know a name. This name is Karl Jaspers. Karl Jaspers was a German Swiss psychiatrist it's not interesting for us in this uh, in the framework of our course, but also philosopher and historian of philosophy. In 1949, he published a book, The Origin and Goal of History. In this book, he explained the concept of Excel age. Excel age, or sometimes we say pivotal age. And this pivotal age is a very special time in the history of the humankind. Excel age is the intense period of philosophical development, development beginning around the seventh century and concluding around the third century BC. By the way, BCE or BC doesn't mean or doesn't mean every time before Christ, but before common era. Sometimes for some students, uh, it's important to understand. So before common era, seventh to the third centuries BC. What is this period? I'm sorry, I have to read a little text. 
So, uh, so according to Jaspers, the XLH should be viewed as an objective empirical fact of history. He remarked that during this period in different parts of the world, at the same time or almost the same time, independently from each other, the same way of thinking about the world appeared. And this is without any obvious contact between these parts of the world. At the same time, in the ancient Greece, ancient China, and ancient India, in these periods from 7th to the 3rd centuries BC, the mythological point of view was exchanged uh, by some kind of uh, new way of thinking. So um, in this period, of course, mythology doesn't disappear completely, just like religion, and we know about this. Historically, the first type of thinking was of course, mythological, mythological uh, kind of worldview. Mythological worldview helped the humankind to understand the world for the first time. So, if um, I'm sorry, every time this culture of thinking, I hate it. Uh, so, first, of course, we have to explain, explain what is this worldview, but it's uh, not very complicated. Uh, by your own intuition, you understand we have always some world views. This is, this word is composed of two words, world and view, view of the world, how I see the world. And we have always our individual view on the world. Each of us is individually, originally uh, prepared for this world view by the whole culture, whole education received in the school, in the family, etc. But we have our individual worldview, but also the worldview of the time, of the epoch. And we can define the fundament, uh, this, uh, this uh, term worldview like the fundamental cognitive orientation of an individual or society encompassing the whole of the individuals or society's knowledge and point of view. So we have individual point of view or worldview, but of course the epoch, the time has its general world view. And of course there are many different types of worldview. We have myth and mythological worldview, also religion and religious worldview, and then philosophy and philosophical worldview. And I would like also to join the scientific worldview or the clear. Uh, uh, for for, for uh, the clear uh, image of uh, this uh, this uh, topic. Uh, so uh, myth or mythological type of worldview is historically one of the first types, as I said, of worldviews. 
religion and religious worldview differs from the myth by its greater organization and uh, roughly speaking roughly speaking religious uh, religious worldview is the second historically but it's difficult to say in philosophy because we have no it's it's very rare that we have in philosophy exact dates of apparition of the worldview so, but <clears throat> the difference of religion also, of, roughly speaking, with myth is uh, greater organization, often represented by religious institutions like church, temple, synod, etc., etc. And finally, philosophy, which is the difference with myth and religion. Philosophy differs from mythological and religious consciousness by a rational approach to understanding issues related to the world. Rational means reasonable, ratio in Latin reason. So philosophy is a rational and especially uh, in comparison with myth and religious is a rational worldview. Philosophers try to understand the world rationally from the point of view of reason, a reasonable explanation. Uh, so uh, philosophy, we can't say but philosophy today is the, just a monolithic piece of knowledge, just like in your sciences, because you are not students from faculty of philosophy, but from different faculties. For example, biology. I know that today I have many students from biology, biological faculty. So for example, biology, we can't say that there is a biology in general. We have different branches of biology, yes? Biochemistry, I don't know, biotechnology, uh, scientific biology, uh, and I don't know, many, many different branches, you know better than me. In philosophy, this is the same. We have branches. And three, the most important branches of philosophy you should know about are First, ontology. Ontology is the most ancient branch of philosophy, the first historically, which appeared with the first philosophers. And the word ontology provides from two words. The first, ontos, in ancient Greek, being, and logos, speech, discourse, and word. Today, logos and different logi, logia, biology. This is logi provides from logos. Today is considered like science, but initially just like speech, like word word about being, speech about being, discourse about, about being. So in general, basically philosophy of being, philosophy or discourse about everything which exists. And this moment is important. We're going to talk later uh, during our next lectures about the being, of course, this is, it's a big topic. Um, and you'll see that this question is the most fundamental question in philosophy. The second branch is gnosiology, uh, or today we also talk about epistemology. It depends on philosophical tradition. In Soviet, post-Soviet philosophical tradition, we are the tendency to talk about gnosiology. 
But surprise, surprise, if you are going to the French philosophical faculty, for example, and you are starting to talk about gnosiology, I know what the gnosiology is, yes, yes, yes. And French philosopher doesn't understand you because for French philosopher, only epistemology exists. So, but anyway, uh, despite different philosophical tradition, this branch of philosophy is about knowledge because to talk about everything what exists, everything what is, it's one thing, but how can we know about this what exists from where provides our knowledge of the world? Two words mean knowledge, but with a little bit different semantical, uh, semantical uh, uh, understanding, if you want. Gnosis means knowledge in general and episteme, scientific knowledge. Anyway, logos, I don't explain, of course, Anyway, this branch of philosophy is about knowledge, how the knowledge is possible. And this is the second big topic of our lectures for this semester. And the third branch is axiology. Axiology provides from, of course, Greek words, word value, axia, value, and axiology is philosophy of values. But sometimes I'm asking students, which kind of values do you know? And students say often, I know material values and spiritual values. No, we don't speak about material and spiritual. This is not, uh, this is not uh, the structure, uh, structure of axiology, like philosophy. Axiology has two sub-branches. First, ethic, ethics, ethical values. What is ethical values? Good, bad, justice, injustice. Yes, and different appreciation of our behavior uh, among people. The word ethics provides from first ethos, custom, habit, and then this word becomes etike, science of morals. So ethics is philosophy of morals, or sometimes we say practical philosophy. So how to use our philosophical views on practice? The usefulness of our philosophical views and theories. And the second kind of values is aesthetical values. It's not about good and bad, moral or not moral. It's about beautiful and ugly. So beautiful and ugly is not good or bad among other people, but beautiful and ugly is significant for us. So the word aesthetics provides from aesthetikos, Greek word, which means of sense, perception, sensitive, etc. Philosophy of beauty, which sometimes becomes philosophy of art, but not every time. The second moment or the third moment you should know about philosophy is its periodization. You know that periodization uh, is used in the history. So the history of philosophy is important, of course. We have the history of ideas, but there is a small, slight, difference with the historical periodization. In general, periodization is the process or study of 
categorizing the past into discrete quantified named blocks of time. So we know ancient world, we know before history, yes, we know middle ages, we know uh, new history, etc. But in philosophy, we have periodization, which is classification of paradigms. Paradigms is also a very important word for you. You should know. Sorry, somebody is late. Uh, and in philosophy, this, this is word also from Greek language, from paradigma, which means pattern, example, sample. And in philosophy, it means a distinct set of concepts of, or thoughts, patterns, thought patterns, which constitutes legitimate contributions to the history of thought. Three big period or three big paradigms in the history of, of philosophy we know, recognized by everyone in the world. But here I especially explain that this is the Western philosophy, but not only in the Western philosophy, these periods are recognized. So the first is the big period, ancient period of ancient philosophy, classical philosophy. This is the Greek Roman period from 6 BC to the third, fourth AD centuries. The second big paradigm is medieval paradigm or medieval philosophy, and especially Christian European philosophy from five to 16th centuries, of course, AD. And finally, modern philosophy. Modern philosophy starts from 17th century and uh, continues till nowadays. Of course, perhaps you have heard the word postmodern. We are living in so-called postmodern times. But postmodern is a complicated and very debatable concept. So perhaps if we have time, we will discuss about, but uh, there is no, uh, the, the, the unique opinion in the middle of philosophy, unique opinion about are we living in modern times or in postmodern times. So for the moment, for just not uh, complicated, complicating our discourse, we just remember three big periods, ancient, medieval, modern. And uh, because we have no uh, many time before the end of our lecture, I would like to explain you that uh, on my page, uh, Univer, on my profile of my discipline, you can find different sources. Like, for example, this good book for uh, the beginners in the philosophy. The philosophy book, Big Ideas Simply Explained in PDF format. Uh, I like this book because it's really very clear, not very complicated at all, and many ideas are very good explained. So just like for your consultation about periodization in the philosophy and different uh, uh, philosophical teachings, you uh, should consult this book. The second one I recommend you is the Russell Bertrand's book, A History of Western uh, Philosophy and its connection with political and social circumstances from the earliest times to the present day. This book is published in 1945, 
but believe me that Russell is a very big philosopher and logician, and his history of Western philosophy is a classical book uh, about Western philosophy, about philosophy in general. If you read this, you will not uh, lose your time. But it's, uh, of course, a little bit uh, more complicated than uh, this uh, small uh, yellow book, uh, which I demonstrate on my screen. And as promised, at the end of our lecture, we have questions of each lecture, okay? From three to five questions. And your one of your tasks will be to, uh, to uh, find the answer to these questions, different questions. Uh, I will explain how to work with tomorrow on my seminar. But today, just for your information, questions to the lecture number one. First question, can myth or religion play the role of philosophy? Very interesting question. Why I'm asking about this? Because I would like you to understand the difference of myth and religion from philosophy first. And the second, second to understand the common, uh, common points of these three different points of view. At the same time, differences on the one hand and on the other, the common points. The second question is, the first philosophers were Thales, Anaximander, and Anaximenes. For Thales, the beginning of all that exists was water. For Anaximander, it was appearance. For Anaximenes, it was air. Why, despite the fact that these philosophers considered the source of being to be water, apparent, and air, we cannot say that their worldview was mythological. Simply speaking, why are they called the first philosophers? So you should to see sources for understanding this question. And the third question is, give examples of the presence of mythological views in modern everyday life. Do you think there is a place for mythology in modern life? So you see that these questions are not so easy to answer because for giving answer, you have to understand the difference between myth, religion, and philosophy. And also you have to think, you should, you should think, you can't just make me copy past from some sources online you find and you even didn't read. I know that today's uh, sometimes, sometimes I don't say everyone, but sometimes some contemporary students uh, have this bad habit to go to the internet to make copy past without reading and sometimes just to send me uh, without even to know what is inside exactly. So to avoid this situation, I would like you to think about these questions. I repeat how to work with questions you can uh, know from my seminar tomorrow. This is the end of our lecture today. Our lecture is recorded. And I'm asking you to subscribe to my channel because on my channel in the commentaries
to my video lectures, you will give me answers. And your answers will be appreciated with marks. Thank you very much for visiting my course. This is the end. Have a nice day and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.